Now we will proceed further and look at conditional formatting. Conditional formulas are done, right? If nested ifs, ifs, a max ifs, min ifs, sum ifs, count ifs, and also error handling. Now let us look at conditional formatting. I'll open the file that I prepared for conditional formatting. So this is my data. Okay, we have uh, coffee chain data, basically different types of products that are being sold across different states in the US. Okay, these products are classified into various product types. We know the state, the territory, what type of product is it? The target profit given to the pro uh, to that product, to that transaction, and the actual profit made, and the mark price, the MRP. Okay, this is simple data. And we have about 100 transactions, I think, over here. Yeah, we have about 100 transactions. Okay. Now, I would like to highlight certain values here. Okay. So my requirement is this. First requirement is, I would like to highlight all of those cells where the target profit is more than 100. Where the target is greater than 100. So how to do it? How to highlight certain data based on some conditions. For that, in the home ribbon that we are in, okay, that I am on, we have this group, the styles group, the styles group over here, these three members. I'll go under conditional formatting. And there are quite a good number of options we have here. Let us look at the first one. Highlight cell rules. And again, we have multiple sub options, okay, like uh, greater than something when you are trying to highlight a member that is greater than certain value, a cell that has a value greater than certain value that is mentioned, less than something, between something, equal to something, highlight text that contains certain substrings, a date occurring and duplicate values. You can even highlight duplicate values. Okay, I want to simply use greater than, highlight cell rules greater than so if it is greater than what look at the rule now okay only format the cells which contain the cell value which is greater than 100 and how is it going to highlight you can see a preview here it is going to highlight it with light red fill with dark red text if you want you can go and choose some other thing also let's say green fill with dark green text it will look like this if you're not happy with this, you can also go ahead to customized format and you can customize the font style, the background color, all these things. I will click on OK. So is this cell greater than having a profit, a target profit of greater than 100? Yes. OK, we will discuss. Uh, we have just started about or started off with error handling in uh, Indira Kumar, right? Yeah, today we have seen two errors. As we proceed further, we will see others, okay? All right. So here you can notice that the value is greater than 100. Therefore, it is highlighted. It has highlighted it. Now, what will happen if I copy it down? Right, we need Tableau, uh, Excel to check the complete data present in this column and highlight all of those cells in column G, it has to highlight all the cells where the target profit is greater than 100. So if I try to copy down this formula with a double click, what did it do? It copied the value. But that's not what we want. We don't want to copy down the value. We want to copy down only the conditional formatting that we applied. So next to this field, you can see one small pop-up kind of an icon. This is having certain autofill options okay so i'll have to click on this drop down icon i would like to copy the formatting only not the cell right now it has copied the data in the cell i would like to fill formatting so once i do that you see only the formatting condition is copied and based on the condition we have set up it has highlighted all those cells with more than 100 
as the target profit. I hope it's clear. It's a pretty straightforward thing, but you have to remember to copy it down. And when you copy it down to the remaining cells, you have to make sure that you select this option, fill formatting only. Otherwise, it will copy the values. Okay. Now, I'll change the requirement. Wherever the target profit is greater than 100, I would like to highlight that entire row, the complete row, not just that particular cell, but the whole row has to be highlighted in green. Now, how to achieve that? Okay. So, I will first go to conditional formatting and clear the rules. Whatever rules have been applied on this sheet, I'm going to clear them. I'll, I'll design a new rule. So I'll go to highlight cells. I would like to highlight cells based on some and uh, condition that I will define using the more rules option. So let me go to more rules. And now here, highlight only. So I will use a formula to determine which cells to format. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. And here, the condition is greater than 100. Okay, the condition is that it is supposed to be greater than 100. And uh, I think I should have copied the whole thing. Let me just check. Manage rules. It's applying only to G2, as you can see. It is getting applied only to G2. Let me just copy the whole data. Command shift right, command shift down. The whole thing has to be highlighted, okay? So first I'll clear the rules. Let me apply the rule, more rules. So used uh, based on a formula, we would like to do it. Based on what formula is equal to? Based on the data that is present in the G2 column. Okay, and I would like to check whether this is greater than 100. But if I do this, you can notice that G2 is absolute formatting, uh, referencing, right? It has logged in the column, it has logged in the row. So it is referencing only one particular cell G2. But that is not what we want. In this case, we are going to use something called as mixed referencing. Yesterday, when we discussed relative referencing and absolute referencing, I mentioned about mixed referencing. Okay, what is mixed referencing? It is where we keep either only the column constant or only the row constant. So we lock in either only the row or the column, not both of them. When both of them are locked in, it is absolute referencing. When only one of the one of them, only the column or only the row are logged in, that is then it is mixed referencing. When none of them are logged in, then that is relative referencing. Okay, here we'll go with mixed referencing, meaning I have to lock in the column. I need to look for the data in the column G, but the row has to change, right? It has to check for the data in row two, then check the data in row three, then four, five, six, so on. So the dollar sign before the row, I will remove. This one should be greater than 100, no doubt, but the dollar sign that is there before G, uh, before the row number, okay, that is what I have removed. So what is going to happen is it is going to lock only the column, whereas the row will be relative referencing. So this is mixed, okay. Now you can see how all of those rows having a target profit of greater than 100 are highlighted. The complete row got highlighted. Okay, if you would like to do this on profit, let's say you want to highlight those transactions where the profit is greater than 100. Suppose that's my requirement. Okay, let me try that also. So first of all, I will clear the rules. Okay, the, the question is, can we highlight those transactions where the profit is greater than, let's say, 50. Okay, we can do that. Can go to conditional formatting. 
uh, you can go ahead and use the greater than rule. Okay. I want to highlight all those transactions where the profit is greater than, let's say, 100. And I want to highlight that in green color. Okay. And I will copy this down and I will make sure to copy only the formatting. What happened? Let me just check the rule again. Cell value, format text, it contains. Yeah, this is fine, no? One moment, let me highlight the data. That could be one reason. Sometimes when we don't highlight the data, it might not work. Which are greater than 100. Greater than 100. I think I had given the greater than symbol. And I'm going to highlight it in green. So you can see wherever the profit is greater than 100, it highlighted. Now, Wherever the profit is less than 50, I need to highlight that in red, suppose. So I will go here. I'll add one more rule. Okay, I will add one more rule where the profit is less than less than 50. Okay, where the profit is less than 50. But I didn't highlight the cells, so it will not work. It will not work. I need to first highlight the cells. Okay, select them. Now I will apply the rule. Manage rules. Okay, this is fine. Let me close it. I will go ahead and add another rule for less than condition. So where it is less than 50. Only format cells that contain cell value of less than 50. And we are using red color for that. Okay. So you can see wherever the profit is less than 50, they are highlighted in red. Now let's see where it is between, in between. 50 to 100, I would like to highlight in yellow. So I'll simply select the column. I didn't copy it down. I didn't copy it down. So, okay. Now that I have copied it down, it will work with the entire data. You see everywhere below 50 is in red, above 100 is in green. Now we will go ahead and we will apply one more condition. What is the next condition? Between. So between 51 and 99. Or 50 we can take. That was greater than 50, right? So this is from 50 to 100. Okay, let us highlight it with yellow. Getting it. So you see how it got, it got applied. We're getting yellow now. Where are we getting yellow? Wherever it is in between 50 and 100. Clear. So like this, you can set up conditions and you can highlight your data. This is conditional formatting. Now, rather than doing it like this, rather than doing it like this, let's say um, there is an easier method of doing it. Here, I had to go and do it three, three times. I had to give one greater than condition. I had to give a less than condition. And then I had to give one between condition. Right? Now, what else we can do here is we can use color scales. So I think we'll talk about color scales tomorrow. That time you will see how using these gradients, we can automatically fill the data based on their color. Today, we'll focus on top bottom rule. So we'll just take up these two parts. Okay. Let's go to mark price now. Let's work with mark price. This is my data. And over here, I would like to highlight through conditional formatting, I would like to highlight top 10 items. Let's say top 10 items or top 10% of the values, bottom 10 values or bottom 10% of the values, all the values which are above the average or all the values which are below the average. We have these and we can also go ahead to more rules and define additional rules if required. So here, let's just check top 10 items now. Top 10 items. So I need top 10 items and it has to be highlighted, let's say in green. 
Now once I click on OK. So the top 10 items in this particular column are highlighted in green. Nothing from here. They are all here only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Getting it. Now let me change that rule. After applying a rule, we can go to manage rules if we would like to make any changes to that rule. Manage rules and uh, one moment. Okay, I've selected it. Let's go to manage rules. On this cell, whatever rule I had, I'm going to edit the rule. Down here is the edit button. So what I will say is, give me the top 10% of the values. Let's increase the percent. I'll make it 20%. Because in total, I have 100 rows here. Out of 100 rows, if I ask for top 20%, it is going to highlight 20 rows. Okay. Okay. So now you see it has increased. The number of records which are highlighted, it's the top 20% values that we have. The values which are not highlighted, if you notice, they are all small values. They definitely don't come under the top 20%. Okay. So like this, we can define rules using this highlight cells rules or using the top and bottom based on whatever you might want to highlight, you can do it. At any given point of time, if you would like to clear the rules, okay, you can just go ahead and in one go, you can clear the rules that are applied to the entire sheet or you could clear the rules from selected cells. All right. And whenever you might want to modify a rule, you can go to manage rules. It will show you the rules applied on that column. Or you can even see all the rules that are applied to the entire worksheet. So these are the different rules that we applied on this worksheet. We had th uh, three rules defined on the profit column and we had one rule defined on the marked price. Okay, so whichever rule you feel is not necessary, you can select that rule. You can go ahead and delete it by clicking on the minus sign. Okay, if you might want to delete a rule, you have to select the rule and you have to delete it by clicking on the minus sign. It goes away. If you might want to edit a rule, Select it and then click on the edit rule button and then you can change the conditions that you have given. Okay, so let's say I want this in green now. Slight variation will be there. This is MacBook and in Windows you may get slight variation in the pop-up, the window, the way it looks. The look and feel could be a little different. But these features at the core will remain the same. Okay, the features remain the same. Maybe a little bit with respect to the user interface, you might find some changes here and there. Okay.